like, that's cool, man. I want Ooh. all the things, including the trash. Welcome that's back cute. to another episode. We're finishing up our cryptid month. We haven't decided what we're doing next month. Um, if you guys have suggestions, throw hit us up. In. I've been sort of playing with the idea of like a true crime month. True crimes are just... We can watch True Detectives. Dude! I've been meaning to. Oh, fuck! I've never... Seriously? I've, I saw part of one episode and I was like, eh, I don't get it. But Dude. then once I heard about it, I was like, I would like that. It's my favorite thing in the world, but we're skipping season two. Season one, season three. I've no heard season, season one is gold. Se- season one is the best. Season two is a close second. Um, let's do it. Then we'll, wh- Wait, if season two is a close second... Oh, no, sorry, season three. Oh. Season three. Season two is garbage. <laughs> season two is the season with Vince Vaughn, and it is not worth watching. I adore Vince Vaughn. Though. I normally do, but it's trash. Oh, um, man, that's a bummer. You know what I'll say? Watch season one, watch season three, and then if you have time, watch season two. Okay, so is it like American Horror Story where the first season is fucking gold, the second, like... The second season was Asylum, right? Mm, yeah. It was not good. It would have been amazing if it didn't have aliens. Nothing against yeah. aliens, but, like, they really fucking shoehorned it in there. hmm I understand yeah. what they were going for. I know the story they were trying to tell, but they did not do it well. No. Um, and then Coven. I did not want to watch Coven, and I liked it. It was good. I liked it, too. Realizing that Kathy Bates was in it was a real game changer for oh, me. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Angela Bassett? Come oh, on. Shit. She's Marie amazing. LeBeau. She's amazing. Once they started branching out and getting more people in the cast, it oh, got yes. better. But fucking Asylum was garbage. Yeah. It was not was... good. And that's the one that I had the highest hopes for. Freak uh, Show also. Yeah. I had really high hopes for Freak too. Show. And I was like... I didn't even finish the last season. I, I didn't. I didn't even watch the last season. I know. It's just like oh, American fuck. Horror Stories, though. Uh, pretty fucking good. Yeah, pretty good. I, I liked will it. say. I um, wish that they would just do an entire show that's nothing but the first season. Oh, I know. Going right? into the different backstories, just like yeah. they did in the first season. They would pick somebody and zero in. I want them to do that, but mm-hmm. for eight seasons. I would right? love that. That would be amazing. And also, then I could follow the romance of those two, because it was so sweet. Are you talking about... Kaya Vi- Gerber and the oh, other yeah. gal with the yes, pair? Yes, that was very sweet. I thought so, too. She would come every Halloween. I oh, know. How sweet is so that? so good. And visit her dads and stuff. That was fucking amazing. Adorable. Yes. I loved it. Mm, it's so good. Okay, so then, yeah, true crime. So we'll watch, uh, we'll tr- true detective. We'll do some true crime stories, and we'll we'll make it fun and lighthearted uh, as much as we can, mm. because that's what we do. We'll attempt to. Yeah, we'll attempt to. We're not gonna make light of anything crazy. I'm not. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it at this. We're not. We haven't maybe flushed we, it out yet. Yeah, maybe we won't do true crime. Maybe we, we'll do something else. Maybe we will. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you on your toes. You got to keep listening to find out. Yeah, that's true. Because we don't even know. We're wacky. We are wacky. Maybe we'll just do one that's all TV shows. You don't fucking know. You, you know, that's know. true. That's true. That's Dude. true. Um, Today, though, we're doing obscure cryptids. I've got five of them. Megan's got five of them. We're going to roll them, roll them out for you because you need to know about them. They're fucking amazing. I have five note cards. One's blank. Which one <laughs> you guess? <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm going to start with the crappy ones. Crappy being, like, my least favorite. and move up to my favorite. Then why did you do them if they were your least favorite? Because they're all my favorite. Oh. But it's just the least favorite of the favorite. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. So is are we going one for one? Or Let's just... do one for one, yeah. Okay. All okay. Right. Uh, do you want me to start? Yes. Okay, the Mongolian death worm. Oh, my God. That's the guy that looks like a red dick with yep. the lamprey. Yeah. Totally, totally. That dude looks scary. I almost did that. Oh, he's allegedly exists in the Gobi Desert. Okay, let me say Megan and I don't know which cryptids we each did. So it's like a surprise. There's a chance that we are going to do the exact same ones. We might. In which case, we'll huzzah, we'll do them both. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this creature first came to the Western attention as a result of Roy Chapman Andrews' 1926 book on the Trail of Ancient Man. Man, I said that weird. I didn't mean to. Uh, the American paleontologist described secondhand tales of the monster that he heard at a gathering of Mongolian officials. I bet that there was nothing problematic in that book. I bet not. I bet it was real PC. Yeah. <laughs> none- Zero outdated <laughs> ideas. He says none of those <laughs> present ever had seen the creature, but they all firmly believed in its existence and described it minutely. That's not the right word. I feel like minutely is not used Like, did they there? describe it a little, or they described, like, all of the minutia? That's what I'm wondering, too. That's why I feel like that's not the right word. 
They were really vague, they were, or they were very descriptive. I feel like he might mean very intensely descriptive. Um, but in, I kind of hope they were just really vague. They're like, I don't know, it's red, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's long, it's got teeth, and we don't want none of it. <laughs> it looks like a dog's dick. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, it looks like a dog's dick. Yes, but it's really gross. Like, the front of the dick is where the tail is. Yes. Yeah, totally. Oh my god, what if all dog dicks are actually those Are those death worms? Ugh. Oh, well, it's okay, because in 1983, a specimen of a tartar sand boa, which is a big fucking snake... Uh, was shown to locals who claimed to have seen the uh, Mongolian death worm, and they confirmed that this was, in fact, the same animal, which is a huge letdown. Um, really? I don't think so. I feel I don't better. Think it is. I'll be able to sleep. <laughs> really? Ah, yeah. I'm oh. fine with it just being a really scary oh. snake instead oh. of a really scary, like, lamprey thing that walks, that's, like, snake likes. It on does. land it's <laughs> what is that swivels slithers slithers, slithers on that yeah no i'd rather it be a snake i know what snakes are <laughs> they said it's shaped like a sausage about two feet long has no head nor leg and it is so poisonous that merely to touch it means instant death that's so funny in my mind it was like 16 feet long Me like too. the dimensions of a boa yeah yeah, like real long. It's real only fucking two thick. feet. This is a, this is according to Cryptopedia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can't trust those motherfuckers. No. We have conflicting. They stories. make up. They make shit up. They do. They make shit up. And now I'm reading it. <laughs> 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 um, supposedly, it lives in the most desolate parts of the Gobi Desert, traveling Good. underground. That's why it's desolate. Yeah, travels underground, sort of like um, Tremors. You know the movie Tremors. That's what this is. That's what it was based on. I presume i have no evidence of that but tremors is a lot like this mongolian death worm um it lives in let's see traveling underground creating waves of sand on the surface which allows it to be detected it is said it can kill at a distance either by spraying a venom at its prey or by means of electric discharge it primarily lives and burrows underground only rarely coming to the surface okay so a boa constrictor doesn't have venom and doesn't emit electric so I don't think there's any way that it could have been. It's like a venomy, uh, electric eely lamprey snake. Yes. It spits jizz at you. Jizz and bees. Don't all of them? They do. I thought that was their scary thing. That's sort of their thing. So much jizz. Okay. Like a hundred. <laughs> and that is the Mongolian death worm. Ta-da! Ta-da! What do you have? Uh, let me see what this guy is. Okay. Um, this one is a little bit more basic. I have a couple of basics. A little bit, but I love it all the same. I was going to leave it for last, but why would I? I don't want to leave you guys disappointed for last. <laughs> Black-eyed children. <gasps> Black-eyed children. Holy fucking shit. I literally have lost sleep at night thinking about the black eyed children. Oh, so have I. Oh my god. They're fucking scary, man. So check this shit out. The I don't know if you guys know this. Uh <laughs> so initially on Creepypasta, the first record of them being, I guess, talked about. And okay, also they're supposed to show up or show up more frequently if you talk about them. So <laughs> I fucking hope not. Oh, yeah. Allegedly, we're not supposed to say skinwalker, and we said it a bunch in the last episode, and now it's supposed to call a skinwalker to us. I have to stop saying that. You know what? My dog has been sniffing around the property a lot like he's tracking something. Oh, God, he's already here. Also, uh, isn't now when, like, all the new squirrels happen or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's probably mm -hmm. more likely, I think. Anyway. I hope uh, so. Well, here's the thing. If a skinwalker tries, it's not going to work. Because, like, in order for a skinwalker, or even, honestly, for a black-eyed kid to get you, you have to be one of those people in the horror movie who opens the door and investigates the yeah. noise. Oh. And guess what? I'm not. Nope. Um, I always have my dog on a leash at night because I don't want to have to dig in a bush to get him separated from who the fuck knows what. Yeah. Um... If someone's calling out, like, hey, come out here, 
<laughs> wrong door, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, wrong the, door. This is the fastest way to get me to not answer it. Dude, so oh, for sure. Someone rang my doorbell at four o'clock in the morning. I went on my ring doorbell app. I checked out who it was. I could have said hello. I still chose to say nothing and just watch until he walked away. Yeah, <laughs> like, I like too. Fuck you ringing my doorbell at yeah, 4 a.m. No. Like, it's not happening. I, I'm not going to respond when someone says help. I'm not going to fall for it, Skinwalker. Right. I'm not going to answer the door when I don't see a head. I can see you on my ring doorbell. <laughs> I'll know. I know who you are. I'll see those fucking yeah. things, those black eyes. Dude, check this out. So okay. the dude who first had talked about it, uh, I believe on Creepypasta, uh, or not, somewhere, <laughs> maybe Reddit, maybe 4chan, who's to say? Oh, One of the two, though. Uh, this is not Facebook content, friends. Uh <laughs> Anyway, he had said that he was, like, in a movie theater parking lot. I don't know, like, sorting out his bills on his phone or whatever. Like, it was at night. And these two kids, one was, like, 12 and one was, I don't know, I think, like, 6 or so, knocked on his car, his truck door and, like, wanted them, wanted him to give them a ride somewhere. And he was like, um, fuck no. Because it was, it was, the weird thing is it was too late at night for them to be out. Yeah. And they gave him just the fucking heebies. Like, the heebie-jeebies. And he was like, no. And, uh, he said that they kept, it was like they were saying shit on loop. Like, the kid kept saying something like, I'm, I'm just a kid, it's not like I have a gun. I've heard that too. And, like, let me in, and as he started to be like, uh, fuck no, their voice got different, and it started to be like, he was like... Something to the effect of, let me in. I can't come in unless you let me in. Or something like that. And he was like, well, how about fuck no? And that's kind of similar account. So nobody... Allegedly, if you let these things in, whether it's in your car, in your house, in your life, um, nothing good will happen. There's no real accounts of people, like, letting a black-eyed kid in. I don't know if they kill you, take you to a different dimension, string of bad luck. Are they demons? I mean, I've heard they're demonic. Maybe. Also, I've heard that they might be alien in nature because it seems like they're still trying to figure out what societal norms are. Yeah. Like, it seems like they have figured out, okay, people will respond to help children. Yeah. And people will respond to, you know, want to help especially if it's late at night, but they're still trying to fine tune it because there's certain times of night where it's like, okay, if you see a kid in trouble at like seven or 8 PM. Okay. Yeah. If it's two or three in the morning, uh, no fucking way. Right. No fucking way. And so generally most accounts are, they'll knock on the door. Their, their head will be down it's either one or two, um, and they will ask for help in one way or another. You know, um, can I come into your house and use your phone? Can I come into your house and have a drink of water? Can I come? They always want to come into your house. Hmm. And they get very fucking insistent if you mm-hmm. say no. I don't like um, it. They will get angry. They will, their voices will distort. Uh, their little faces will distort. But it always seems like it's something who is not used to being in that body. Yeah, because they can't maintain it really well under stress kind of a thing, right? No, more... I mean, yeah, but more just... They don't... It's not like a regular six-year-old. It's like somebody trying to play a six-year-old. It's like Predator <sighs> trying to be a six-year-old. Oh, oh, oh. Um, That's why you will never find a welcome mat at my house. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but there, so there's there's a, a thought behind it that you, if you see a mat that says welcome or come on in, friend, on the welcome mat, that's a form of invitation. That's true. And honestly, I don't have a welcome mat either. I don't. Mine says, well, uh, mine says um, like haunted happy house or something. It doesn't say welcome. I don't have a mat. Yeah. I'm a heathen. <laughs> I only have a mat because my kids are... Always covered in something. I live in an upstairs apartment, and the carpet, like, the stairs going up to that are carpeted, and also I have a Roomba. Yeah. You don't need one. I'm, yeah. No. But you'll never find any shit that says welcome around my house. That's how you'll know mm. you're at my right house. <laughs> not your bizarro house. Yes. It's, yeah. Oh, fuck. I do not yeah. like any of the Halls. 
So if I express that I do, you'll oh. know I'm not me. Interesting. That's good to know. I fucking hate the Beatles. If I invite you in to listen to the White Album, it's not me. Good to know. It's not me. Good to fucking know. I've been abducted. (laughs) Good to know, though. Ooh, black Um, kids. I know, right? Yeah. That's pretty much, that's all that I have to say, is kind of like the skinwalkers, they will, um, you know, they'll repeat a phrase. Like, but on loop, though. Mm. It's like it's on loop. It's not like... (sighs) It's not like they're like, hey, come help. Hey, mister. Hey, mister, come help. It'll be like, hey, come help. (laughs) Hey, come help. Hey, come help. I wonder if it's like in Men in Black when the guy, it's like when the tiny alien is like this big and it's wearing the suit of like a bigger person. Yeah, right. And they open it and it's like, "Eh." yeah. Maybe, dude. Maybe. All right. That brings us to the regional regionally appropriate dingbat have you ever heard of a dingbat um no i don't think so (laughs) so i'm going to tell you what it says and then i'm going to describe it to you a dingbat is a fearsome creature from the tales of lumberjacks of north america from the 19th and early 20th centuries um it is a jackalope style owl it is an owl with horns yes The dingbat is described as a large bat or bird-like creature with a short feathered body, large wings, and short, short deer-like antlers. So they're like, it's not like somebody just put antlers on it. Like they're, they're proportionally accurate. They must be hollow. Yeah. Probably. Otherwise it would just fly in weird. Yeah. Head over ass. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So it's, uh, the dingbat has the unique (laughs) about... I can't even say it with a straight face. The unique ability to eat bullets in midair and was known for pranking hunters by drinking the gasoline out of their cars and stealing all their ammo. Okay. Um, does it eat the bullet or does it just get hit by the bullet? <laughs> <laughs> it eats the bullet and gets real <laughs> sleepy. Exactly. And then it pees red stuff all over the ground. Man, it must have a kidney infection. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and they're so fucking cute. I mean, they're literally like, oh. they're like the size of a What Furby. if they're just horned owls? I know, right? Which I know horned owls just are called that because they have the little like things the crest. here. But I mean, but you know. It could be. Yeah. So cute. Cute. They're so fucking cute. When I when I saw the pictures, that sounds adorable. Which are, I mean, granted, they're all artist depictions. <laughs> oh, so okay. That's the that's the jackalope of the flying critters, the dingbat. That's adorable. That actually so makes cute. me change um, what I did not have written down on a card. I was gonna do elves. I'm gonna do snipes. Have you ever heard of a fucking snipe? <gasps> no. Oh no shit. I mean, I've heard like, oh, uh, you go snipe hunting, and that's your way of like getting your kid out of your hair for the day because they're never gonna find it because a snipe is not a thing. Pretty much. Um. So my family actually has a really funny snipe hunting story. Mm. Uh. So back when my uncle was, I don't know, like an early teenager. Um. So early sixties. Um, he and his buddy who lived like two doors down, Kenny Nass, they were just always full of pranks, always full of mischief. (laughs) And my grandmother's, uh, two of her nephews had come to stay and they were like from the city. They were from Seattle. Yeah. And they were like wearing lederhosen and shit. I'm not fucking (laughs) kidding you. There's legend, like there's stories of how their mother used to dress them and it was silly and shameful oh man uh, so they were wearing fucking lederhosen because apparently the 60s were a time when that was fine <laughs> and oh man i uh, hopefully they were not wearing lederhosen for this exact prank though um <laughs> because my uncle and his buddy had brought uh had brought them out and told them i guess they gave them both pillowcases and spatulas <laughs> Told Vic to sit at this end of the log. Oh, told no. Eddie to sit at this end of the log and said that if they heard anything, they got to catch it. Like, if something goes into that sack, they got to tie it up real tight and just start hitting the shit oh, out of shit. it with the spatulas. <laughs> so. I was picturing it the other way. Scoop it into the bag. Oh, no. you oh, can, Yeah. Yeah. The other way makes more sense. And so they were, I mean, it was starting to get dark. It was starting to get past dark. And this is, I mean, like I said, this is like the 60s when you can just, and it was fucking boring. Yeah. 
So you could just kind of let your kids hang out in the forest. Like, no fear of Andre Chikatilo or Wendigos. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, and so they came back, and it was starting to get dark. And my grandma had asked where Vic and Eddie were. And my Uncle Lee and Kenny and Nas just started laughing so hard. <laughs> They're clutching their bellies laughing. And uh, needless to say, they had to go out and get them. Oh. And no snipes were caught. Oh. But, yeah. Oh, that's sad, <laughs> but very funny. It's super funny. Super funny. Two so. kids in Lederhosen sitting on a log, waiting with spatulas to catch fucking snipes. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I think so, too. That's the best. Yes. <laughs> so that's my snipe story. Oh, well, I guess that leads us right into the bat squatch. Okay, I almost did this one. Oh, funny. There's also, uh, God, another bat thing, too. There's a couple. Yeah, there's a few different bat, like, bat something and something squatches. Yes, yeah. Yes. Seems to be, a, like, quite a common uh, hybriding. Oh, there was a monkey bat, and I was like, oh, yeah. fuck that. Oh, yeah. Fuck that jazz. Or like there was like a standing frog or something, a frog the size of a human. I was just like, did you do it? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. I'll shut up. <laughs> That's actually my next one. Yes. <laughs> frog man or something. Yes. Okay. So uh, Bat Squatch is a flying cryptid that was allegedly seen near Mount St. Helens in the 1980s. Um, Sounds right. That's what I thought, too. It resembles a flying primate similar to the Ahul, which is named an Ahul because it goes Ahul <laughs> when it goes Hi. out. <laughs> that's, well, yeah, that's a good reason then, huh? Um, it says its name is derived from the words bat and Sasquatch. Uh, Nadoi. Nah. Shit. <laughs> For real? Oh, that's I thought good. that that was just some <laughs> fancy footwork on their part. It was derived from the Norwegian word for... <laughs> For <laughs> testicles. Oh. Uh, this creature was said to have yellow eyes, a dog-like muzzle, blue fur, which blue like okay. a Russian blue cat or blue like your like hair. my hair. I know. I hope it's I like hope, your hair. Yes, do. You know, <laughs> I want a, I want a teal cryptid. Oh, that'd be so cute. So it's pretty much just Grover with wings. It is All Grover right. with wings. Sharp teeth, bird-like feet, and leathery bat-like wings that span up to fifty feet. That sounds exactly like Grover. Totally. I could because Grover has his cape and everything. Oh. oh my God, it's Grover. That's adorable. I love that. <laughs> oh, so he uh, is meant. He's said to be nine feet tall and has the ability to affect car engines, like affect them like scary. Yeah, make them stop. Fuck all mm. that noise. Well, Bat Squatch, I mean, I'm here for you. I have your award-winning book called There's a Monster at the End of This Book. Yes, that was my favorite <laughs> book. Too. DJ loved it. Wolfie has the one where you push the button and Grover makes all the noises, which is new and adorable. Oh, my God, it's the best. I I'm love gonna, it. I'm going to get that from Moose D. Yes, Grover Squatch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, tell us all about the Frogman. Okay, check this, homie. It's called the Loveland Frog or the Loveland Frogman. Loveland, Texas? Is that? Loveland, Ohio. 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 Interesting. Ohio. Yeah, so this guy is actually kind of newer. He's more contemporary. So it dates back as far as 1955. That is really new. Yeah, and there's only really been like three accounts of him. Oh. So the first one, it was a businessman. Uh, he had seen three of them, and they were like three to four feet tall. And... They were apparently uh, by a guardrail, like on a bridge. And how unsettling to see. <laughs> I know. It's like, there's a fucking giant frog. Three. Three, three of them. Giant frogs. Three of them. Oh my God. And they were just, you know, being themselves. And then they saw him and they leapt over the guardrail to the water. <laughs> Easy enough. And they were like humanoid. They were standing upright, like on two feet. Uh, just conversing, just chilling. Um, and then March 3rd, 1972, a police officer saw one run in front of his car. Oh, shit. Yeah, and once again ran toward the river, going over a guardrail, went in the water. Um, and he had seen, like, on the guardrail where Mr. Frog, like, jumped over or whatever. I don't know if it was slimy or abraded or what. I hope it was slimy. 
I kind of do too, but for the frog's sake, I hope it was just abraded. Because, like, I mean, shit, you go through your life slimy, you know? Yeah, dude. Stuff always getting stuck on you. That sounds terrible. Um, <laughs> and later that month, another officer uh, saw an injured one. And it ran and leapt over the guardrail again. Oh. Um, and he fucking shot at it. Oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. What the so hell? So way to just shoot at something you don't. You don't understand, man. Dude, for my Bigfoot episode, I watched this whole fucking thing about people who are trying to actively kill a Bigfoot so they can have a specimen. I'm like, why the fuck would you kill it? They're like, this is the only way to prove it. Cool. Well, okay. So you're like the collector in Guardians of the Galaxy. I know, right? Like, what if there's only one? Yeah. Then you're a dick. You're a dick. And now there's no more interdimensional Bigfoot. Like, you know how the internet came for that dentist who, like, killed the really big... Yeah, yeah, the lion. Yeah, dude. Imagine yeah. how much the internet would come for you if yeah. you killed the only fucking squash. <laughs> right? There's a lot of us out here. They, Especially if you find you. he's like an herbivore. And, yeah. Right. Then you're just an asshole. Yeah. He's like a harbinger of peace. Right. He's like doing his best. He's going from one dimension to another trying to spread information. He's like healing nature and, and shit. Technology. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, okay, <laughs> I finally got it down. I know how to cloak. And then I can save the little... The rat-tailed blue magoo, you know, in, in Southeast Asia or whatever. And, and they're just like, oh, my God, it's a squash. Right. <laughs> or some dude from West Virginia just decides he wants to just fucking kill you because he's a fucking asshole. And then fuck your corpse. Yeah, probably. probably. Someone would. Someone would. Yeah. I read too I much that that's true. porn to know that it would. Yeah. Ugh. I know. I hate that it's true, The too. internet's gross. The internet's gross good um, and it's bad the internet is gross yeah they probably would fuck these frog guys if they, found them too. <laughs> they probably um, would especially if they're slimy oh god <laughs> jesus christ so the most recent uh account of them being seen was in 2003 a couple of people were playing pokemon go oh shit and yeah and they saw like reflective eyes and shit and they were like what the fuck is that oh, and they god. actually there's a video of that i mean you can't really see anything other than two reflective eyes but uh, like glowing, pretty much glowing eyes, uh, but nah. Eyes anywhere they shouldn't be. Are fucking I know. Awful. I know it. I know Ugh. it. And that is all I have for the Loveland Frogman. Well, that takes us into my second favorite, the Hopkinsville Goblins. Oh, I love a goblin. Yes. Now I tr- we tried we we tried to watch Hellier. Hellier is my favorite favorite goblin related show there's two seasons of it it's on amazon prime but it is there's a lack of goblins i'm going to tell you that now there there might be a lack of goblins Huge and, lack. and it's a bit heady uh you have to be in a very, very specific wordy. mood for it yeah, yeah you have to have taken your adderall yeah <laughs> it's real good though so if you want all the stuff about it about the hopkinsville goblins go there if you want to hear my breakdown stay tuned i will um, because uh i have all the I have all the info to give you that will leave you wanting more. <laughs> so okay. um, the movie Critters is actually based on this account. No, what? Yes. Mm. Which is like. God, ooh. terrifying. Okay. Yeah. So the Hopkinsville Goblins <laughs> on the evening of August 21st, 1955, five adults and seven children arrived at the Hopkinsville police station. Ooh. Yep. Claiming that small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse, that they had been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four hours. Yeah. Two of the adults, Elmer Sutton and Billy Ray Taylor, claimed that they had been shooting at 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into their windows. Now, this is Kentucky. Like, how many bullets can these little fuckers take to the head? Like, these people are not fucking around. The fact that they are just being pummeled with with bullets makes me think that... um, So the way that they describe them... The way that they describe these are like rounded heads with pointy ears and tiny little bodies. Here's my theory. They're actually, uh, they are some sort of like an imp or possibly an alien, but the like the thing with the pointy ears is a helmet um, and they're wearing some sort of deflecting, I mean, to not be injured at all by a bullet. Like, the whole basis of Area 51 is that, uh, like, their spaceship crashed and then they fucking died. You know, so, like, these things are just taken bullet after bullet. I don't know. I mm. I think it was cats. It might have been cats. They say owls, too. 
Um, Cats are sneaky and they're fucking snoopy. Dude, and they have those pointy ass ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are always peeking in windows and shit. They are. (laughs) Maybe it was Maine Coons. Ooh, they're so cute. I I love Maine Coons. I don't want anyone to ever shoot at a Maine Coon. I would be so upset. (laughs) So concerned about a possible gun battle between the local citizens. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Four (laughs) city police and five state troopers, three deputy sheriffs, and four military police from the nearby U.S. Army Fort Campbell drove to the farmhouse located near the town of Kelly in Christian County. Their search yielded nothing apart from evidence of gunfire and holes in the windows and door screens made by the firearms where they like butter the gun, bam, break the window out, and then like old school style. Um, Yeah, so the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry uh, member and skeptic Joe Nickel notes that the family could have misidentified eagle owls or the great horned owls, which are nocturnal, fly silently, have yellow eyes, and aggressively defend their nests. Um, could have been what they saw, uh, a, bright light stre- a bright light streaking across the sky and disappearing behind a tree is what some of them reported. That kind of sounds a little like an owl. Um, but... Then when you watch Hellier, there are still reports of these goblins hmm. to this day. So are there goblins? I hope so. Do they live in the mountains of Kentucky? Probably. I, probably. There's old mines and shit. Um, is it aliens? I'd be bummed if it was. Because I'm not an alien person. But that would also mean that they crash landed here and they're stuck here and they're living in the hills because they can't ever die or something. I don't know. More, I just love a good goblin. I love a good goblin. So, them's my goblin stories. I fucking like it. I like it too. So, this one uh, is fucking awesome, I think. Yes. Um, I don't... This is another one that, like, I'm, I don't know if it's a cryptid, but I think it is, and it's listed as a cryptid. Mm. So, at least one person agrees that this is a cryptid. Golems. Golems. You know about golems? I know a little bit about golems. I know mud golems from the Jewish. Uh, yes, that's yeah, what I'm talking Kabbalah. about. Okay, yeah, from the uh, the Ashkenazi uh, lore. Yes, tells of these golems. Oh my god! And so it's essentially, um, and this is, I mean, a very like broke down, not broke. condensed, condensed, very condensed. Um, you, it's made of clay. It's brought to life with, like, magic, essentially. Like the Kabbalah type of magic, Totally. Yeah. Um, Yes, not David Blaine. David Blaine has nothing to do with this. Nor (laughs) does Chris Angel. (laughs) This isn't up-close street magic. This is, like, big dick magic. (laughs) Um, And it's brought to life, and it is brought to life... It's kind of like a me-seeks. Mr. Beastie. Yeah, yeah, where it's brought to life to do the bidding of the person who brought it to life. Which I love. Have you? Did you ever watch the Upright Citizens Brigade on um, Comedy Central in like the 90s? I watched it when it aired. Do yeah. I remember any of it? No. Oh, I remember okay. I liked it. I remember I watched it whenever it was on. I cannot tell you a single thing about it other than it had Amy Sedaris. Uh, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler. See, I get those two confused. Uh, Strangers with Candy had Amy Sedaris. I also liked that one. Me too. I do remember little bits of that. Yeah. No, it's so good because they did a sketch about a mud golem that is brought to life and he compulsively cleans everything instead of going on a murderous rampage and they're like, you're a bad Lovely. mud golem. No it's so good, good mud golem. That's why I would bring, that is why I would bring it all into life. That's the only purpose. And to be really cool. Oh, I love that you did this. This is amazing. I fucking love golems. Um, so have you heard of the golem of Prague? No. Oh, I love this guy. Yay. So he was brought to life in the uh, 1700s to protect a village from attack. Oh. Um, and is said to reside in this, I'm, this is a big fucking golem, is said to reside in the attic of a church in the Czech Republic, um, has, was also alleged to have been brought to life briefly during World War II. Oh, shit. To kill a Nazi. Yeah! Yeah! Nazi killer! Yes! I know, right? Oh, that makes me so happy. What's not to love about this guy? That's amazing. So sometimes a golem is more than Peter Jackson fucking tells you, okay? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Doesn't just want to fucking ring. Um, so I actually first learned about golems in a scary book, like a scary stories compilation that I had rented from my um, school library. And I was like, 
Okay, golems, huh? Because, like, in this one, it was the whole thing of, like, the golem didn't want to keep doing the bidding of the master and, like, killed the master, <gasps> which a golem would never do, but yeah. I liked it anyway. Ooh, and after good. it killed the uh, master, it, like, turned, um, it just turned into clay. <laughs> I like it. But, like, it took one for the team. That's awesome. Into, yeah, hella. All so, right. So, that's what's up with that. That's amazing. Golems in a nutshell. Hell yeah. Yeah, I love golems. So my last, my number one, my forever king, uh, queen, my babies, the sweet Fresno Nightcrawlers. They're my, oh, I love them so much. Have you seen the video, the ring doorbell footage? Yes. It looks like a little white tennis ball on a pair of white legs. It looks like a phospholipid. (laughs) It looks exactly like a phospholipid. (laughs) Yep. Totally does. Um, So actually, I... When I was very beginning my search of what am I going to do, um, I saw it looked like a night crawler, except for it had more of a face. Is that the one that's like... It's from China. Yes, and it lives up in the snow. Yes. Yes, I totally saw that guy yesterday. I almost did that one. I was like, oh shit, it's like part whale or something, but it's like a yes. more defined yes. head. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's absolutely yes. it. So uh, also notice... And the... it just looks like it's over it. Oh my God, it totally looks like it's over it. It's like, ugh. Why am I here? What? Ugh, there's no krill up here. On yeah, the land. it just has ucky face all the time. Totally I love it. Is That's me. Best. That's me. It's so grumpy. <laughs> um, it's a cryptid that has made two appearances so far. One in Fresno, California, and the other in Yosemite National Park, also in California. Um, in both sightings, it's only seen in video footage. However, a man in Poland has also claimed to have seen the creatures. Um, they are teensy weensy. It says they're about one and a half meters tall. I don't know how many feet that That's is. That's like five ish feet. One and a half meters. A meter is roughly three feet. Dear. So God. like four and a half feet. That is gigantic. I thought they were teensy weensy like in Alice in Wonderland, the little guys in the forest. Oh, oh. <gasps> oh no, not. it's big enough to be gross. Dude. Okay. Uh, most of their height made up of their legs as they possess an extremely small upper body. I wouldn't even call it an upper body. I just call it a head. It's a head on legs. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find detail in the upper body due to the poor quality of the footage. It is an extremely thin white humanoid with no arms. So not really humanoid. Um, a larger specimen appears to have webbing connecting from each knee to the torso. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, the cryptids appear to have a very... Short, thin, and stilt-like feet. Okay, you're just repeating yourself now, Erin. Um, it's probably just me in a romper. <laughs> That's what I look like in a romper. <laughs> I'm just like a fat Humpty Dumpty body and like skinny white legs. <laughs> yes. Um, so they they think it may be an alien. It may be a new species, possibly a primate with short arms. I'm. I have a take on what I think it is. Oh, good. Uh, a misidentified deer standing upright. That doesn't even make any sense. Pants with a ghost in them is legit one of the explanations. It's okay, like a that's a good pants. take. Yes, like it. it is a ghost wearing pants. A bird walking like a crane or a person wearing big pants and walking on stilts, which is lame. I don't like it. Okay, what's your hot take? Okay, so you know how rich people do weird rich people <gasps> shit, right? Yes. Okay, and you know how they might do weird shit, but their kids do just have off the charts weird shit. Totally. Because they've never been told no and they've never had limits. All right. Here's what I think. I think that somebody who was, I don't know, some sort of a medical person uh, who is perfecting 3D printing organs, (gasps) which would be an immense contribution to society. Oh, shit. I think that their kid just, I mean, to no fault of anyone's and not out of any sort of malignant intent or anything. Like, you know how kids draw? Yes. That is like a kid's drawing. It totally is. And so their, like, four-year-old drew... Actually, Wolfie's drawing. Yes, Wolfie totally draws like this. Oh, my God, and he draws so good. He's such a good drawer. He is. He's He's got little stuff on. And the little smiles. Oh, my God, adorable. Yes. You know what? You should put that on. Yes. We're going to put a picture. It's the best. Yes, definitely. And he's so advanced. Oh, my God, he's getting... He's, like... He's such a good artist. He is. It's phenomenal. But I, I think that somebody's kid like maybe like a three or four year old had seen that daddy can print things yes and drew made a drawing of a friend yep and this friend got 3d printed 
Maybe the babysitter was drunk. I don't know. <laughs> this friend got 3D printed multiple times. Yes. And that's what that is. And it was in, Dude. like, the Fresno area, perhaps. That is, like... Silicon Valley. That's the what whole I was thing. thinking. Yeah, you fucking nailed it. That's my hot take, dude. I love it, and it's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see it. That makes me happier than I thought it would. I love it. Yes, it's just I a kid wanting to friend. It. Because, like, they Stab don't do it. bad stuff. They don't, like, eat cats or anything. They just walk around and be dopey. Yeah. They're like... Burr, 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 right? burr, burr, burr. That's what a kid's drawing would do. Just walk around and be dopey. Oh, my God. I love it. Yes. So that's what that is. Yes. And now, going into the Pope Lake... You done? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm done. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the Pope Lake monster. Holy shit. So, as adorable as those guys are... Um... This is what their angsty 16-year-old would 3D print. <laughs> it, is this the thing I'm thinking of? It it's... looks like Baphomet. Yes. Okay. Um, It's a human-goat hybrid, like head of yes. a goat. It's, it's Baphomet. It's Baphomet. That's it. That's... That's what the fuck that is. Holy shit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing other than that. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry. That thing is... I hope it has a good life. It lives under the railroad track, so I'm going to say maybe it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Oh. Its name is Jim, and its kids hate it. It's, oh. um, it, you, it can use its voice for mimicry or, like, hypnosis to get people to climb um, onto the railroad tracks, either go in, because it lives, like, under the trussle, like, under the bridge part, so either climb up it to get to a train that's about oh, to hit it fuck. or get up there and if there's no train scheduled then it'll just fall off oh my the God. person will just get pushed randomly and fuck. die so this baphomet homie likes to uh lure people to their death in one way or another and he doesn't eat them he just kills for fun yeah that's true that's unsettling. why i said it was with the it's the angsty 16 year old i'm gonna make a baphomet and he lives under a bridge like I want to, like yes. Sam does. Why can't I hang out with Sam? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, it's because he's 45 and he sells heroin. He lost and... custody of his kids. He's sad. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean you should hang out with him. You're 13. Right. What the fuck do you have to offer? <laughs> you shouldn't be hanging out with a heroin dealer oh. who lives under a bridge. He's not good people. He's. Not, I don't oh. care if he knows about <laughs> stuff. His... He doesn't know about not losing his kids. <laughs> Because he sells heroin. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm so not. I just am not going to be equipped to be a teenage kid mom. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, You're DJ. The world. Yeah, DJ. Oh, Holy shit. shit. Sorry about that, yeah, kid. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's going to. I'm probably going to start drinking. I'm playing my cards right so Alex likes me. Yeah. Because Nick already knows that Alex is not going to like him when he's a teenager. So Alex yeah. is going to like me and I'll be the one who's like, yep. Hey, you should really not be a dick to your dad. He yeah. loves you. And they'll be like, what does he know about love? Yeah. Well, I mean, he's been alive for 35 years longer than you have. <laughs> That's right. Fuck him. What does he have to offer? Really? I already have so many of those conversations with DJ. Oh, man. Dude, his sassy ass. He had a birthday party to go to. And he was nervous, and he was spouting off, and he was like, come on, Dad, we need to go. And Dave was like, dude, we don't have to be there for an hour. It's 15 minutes away. We're not leaving right now. And DJ popped off with, the fuck, yo? You want me to be late? And I looked at him. I was like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to, little boy? That is your father. You are lucky he's the one taking you because you talk to me like that. I would not I would tell you, I'll go oh, drop off that present and then we're coming home. That's exactly what I would have done. Yeah. I wouldn't have taken me to drop. I, mm -mm. I would have been like, cool, you're not fucking going. Yeah. And he was like, he looked at me and you could tell he almost was thinking about throwing down. And then he changed his mind and he turned on Dave again. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, don't fucking take him to this party. He's being an asshole. And Dave's like, well, yeah, but he has to teach friends. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You don't get to talk like that, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And he's been playing Fortnite. So he's like, yo, bro, bro, yo. I'm like, this is your father. You don't say yo, bro, to your father. I'll fucking kick your ass. My dad saw him. 
pulling some shit. And he's like, just do what I used to do. Just tell him that you're going to send him to foster care. I was like, that does more damage than you realize. <laughs> when you used to tell me you were going to send me to foster care where I was going to get raped and murdered. Whoa. Are you kidding me? That did the opposite was of what the you Was the raped wanted. and murdered part just your brains going there or him telling you? Oh, he told me explicitly. That's where kids no one wants go is into foster care. And so people who want to rape and murder children take in foster kids. Yeah. Whoa! I know it was Jesus a whole mind fuck. Christ. Yeah, I was like, that doesn't land the way you think it does. The only Dad. thing <laughs> you need to do to be a good parent is the exact fucking opposite of what your dad did. I know. So I think something weird is Damn. going on because so he finished his radiation treatment for his cancer, and he keeps texting me. He's like, "You're such a good mom. Your your boys are so sweet. You've done such a good job." I'm like, who, I mean, like he's right. Who the fuck is this?" Who, Does he think like, he's going to die and so I he's being so. nice? Yeah. Yeah. Nick thought he was going to die. Yeah. And so he was being really nice too. I don't like it. No. It's not comfortable. It's not genuine. And it also pisses me off that he thinks he's going to die, but he's just like not saying it. Well, here's the thing. He is in the beginning stages of thinking he's going to die. Yeah. Uh, if you talk to people in the later stages of knowing that they're going to die, they're a lot cooler about yeah. shit. I like dying people. They're rad. They're uh, very, very heart wrenching for me. Dying people? Yeah, because I put my shit on it. You know, like my fear of dying, and like oh, I cry oh, for them oh, too oh, much. Oh, oh. I'm just like, <gasps> and they're like, "Can you not?" I'm trying to like enjoy <laughs> I'm trying what I to have die, left. bro. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be so bad when oh, I die. So you would be better with <laughs> newly dying you you'd be better with the people who like think they're gonna die i think i'm better with no people (laughs) at all especially if they're going i couldn't do it with people who think they're gonna die like they're just too much because it's like yeah 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 i know you're gonna die but like people who know they're gonna die those are the cool ass (laughs) motherfuckers you want to hang out with that's where that's who i want to like Learn to be comfortable around. Oh, I just, yeah. I'm not there yet. I'm still making it all about me. Man. My mortality. I think that that's why I, I like people who are, like, actively gonna die. <laughs> or, like, are actively just, like, seeking it. Because there's none of that. There's none of the, none of the sadness. It's, it's just like, all right, well... This is going to happen, so what's for lunch? Yeah. Like, just very direct, and they, they don't expect anything of me. Just, like, hanging out's cool. <laughs> and I'm down for that, man. I can hang out, eat some pizza, whatever. Like, that's my, that's dope. That's great. But, like, if there's emotions, I'm like, ooh. That's the whole thing. I think I, I think I left something in my <laughs> other car. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do I can't do it. I can't do it with people. Period. Like a lot of times, although I'm trying to put myself out there and I'm trying to like not be so much of an introvert. So they I'm what they call an introvert I'm an introvert with extrovert personality. So like I don't like hanging out with people, but when I'm with people, I'm like I'm with people. Let's do the talking <laughs> thing. Um, which is kind of confusing for my body. No, but... I do that too. I'm good at doing extrovert stuff, but I just have to recover longer than I used to. Yeah, me too. Like right now, I kind of feel like I'm going to shit myself because we had a long conversation. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm wearing down. Oops, coming. <laughs> like, is that your normal response? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> How That's fucking awesome. stupid is that? <laughs> That's super funny. I don't, know, I don't think it's stupid. I think it's funny. Poop's common. <laughs> that only happens to me if I've been doing too much math. <laughs> Time to get in the house. The poops just balance my checkbook. Got shit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's been our cryptid month. I think we're all going to be mm, happy to get back to the real world. Yeah. Where there's a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reality? Science? Yeah. Science? We're still trying stuff? to figure out what we're going to do for next month. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, man. Maybe true crime is a little too real. Yeah, it might be. I kind yeah. of have been. Maybe we shouldn't swing from like the unreal to the starkly too fucking real. Yeah. Let's do something lighthearted. Yeah, we're going to have to... No, no. No, we couldn't. We couldn't do a whole month of MLMs just slamming them left, right, and center, could we? Wait, why the fuck couldn't we? 
Are there that many? Oh, Jesus. <gasps> Should we take down MLMs? Yes. Okay. That's a hard contender. Email us yeah. if you have a better idea, though. Utterlyunrelatedpod.com um, or utterlyunrelatedpod at gmail.com. Um, yeah, dude. Give us ideas. Otherwise, we're coming for you, MLMs. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Follow us on the things. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, let us know what you want. Um, if you don't email us, we might be forced to get a Twitter and then you'll have to tweet at us what you want. Ooh, I'll do the Twitter. Yeah. Okay, Twitter coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that. <laughs>